Please welcome Hillary Burton Morgan. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to the Tan Fam. Welcome to the show. I know you. <laughs> Have a seat. Oh my goodness, this is a journey. I mean, <laughs> talk about a whiplash of career and choice from scripted television to things you cannot make up and some no. things you want to forget. Yeah, I mean, I actually got my start at MTV, which is where I feel like a lot of people, it's like your internship <laughs> when you're doing unscripted or live television, which is where I know you're very handsome stage manager. <laughs> Steve and I have known each other for 20 years. Um, and so to get over the hurdle of being a host into the acting world was a journey. And now having to convince people that you can also walk backwards and go back to hosting is another adventure. Um, and so this happened really organically because last summer during quarantine, AMC didn't have any programming to put on. My husband works on an AMC show, The Walking Dead. And we said, hey, we can host a show from our garage. And it was supposed to be a really lighthearted event. And very quickly, the subject matter in our public consciousness got very serious. Right. And so we, along with our neighbors in town and other castmates and friends we've collected along the way, started having very tough conversations in a loving, empathetic manner. And so when a, a murder happened in our small town, mm -hmm. um, a number of people in our community came to me and said, can you talk about it? Can you do anything? And I went to AMC, I said, what, what do you think? Can we do a documentary about this? Right. And they said, well, do you one better? Like, can it be a series? Did right. these cases happen in enough places that there's subject material right. for, you know? Well, I can answer yes to that. It does, because I did a crime series for six years. I'm Deadline crime. Yours. But I'll, thank you for that. But I, I know the emotional toll. Seeing you drive through that community I've been there so many times in small towns where these crimes happen. And not that it doesn't have an impact in a big city, of course, yeah. we're in New York. But when it's in a small town, it does impact almost everyone. There's no anonymity. Yeah. You know, you go to church and you see the district attorney. You go to the supermarket and you see a relative of the person who committed mm -hmm. the crime. Mm -hmm. You really can't escape it in the way that you can in urban areas. Um, and, you know, we were really lucky that people were forthcoming and willing to talk with us. We actually met a circuit court judge in Tennessee who was so proud of his family business. His yeah. whole family had worked in um, the legal system and he, he believed in it so much. And he said, that's not a problem that we have here. We don't have wrongful convictions. That happens in urban environments. That happens in minority communities. It doesn't happen here. And I have to keep a straight face, but in my head, I'm like, but that's exactly why I'm here. Right. Well, that's the thing I would run into if people believe that there's a utopia, right? That mm -hmm. if you're in a suburb or if you're in a rural area, I happen to be from Luling, Texas, a very, very small town. It happens everywhere. But what you are bringing to the audience um, is, I think, a deeply revealing, also personal side of your journey, right? Because this is an evolution for, for you. Peyton on One Tree Hill, mm -hmm. that's a whole, that probably seems like a lifetime ago. I don't know that person. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, it's really strange. Right now, I'm working two jobs. I'm doing this job, mm -hmm. which is probably the thing I am most nervous about in my entire career because I feel the weight of carrying these people's causes to a larger audience. This is a massive piece of evidence. This is the most important forensic evidence at that scene. I think it will break this case wide open. That was a clip from Hillary Burton Morgan's new crime show, true crime show, It Couldn't Happen Here, which she also produces. What's, what is the evidence there? So that is episode three, which will air in two weeks. Um, there was a case where a very young mother in Florida was found dead in her boyfriend's home, um, a gunshot wound. They declared it a suicide on the site, which is really supposed to be up to the medical examiner. Mm -hmm. um, her boyfriend was a cop, and it was his service weapon that was used, and there was evidence at the scene that was not collected, and a lot of issues with that case that that private investigator, Clue Wright, has been working pro bono for years. 
to uncover a lot of this material that was kind of swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. And so going to talk to these people and give them the platform to get the information out there is really important. Mm -hmm. And right now that suspect or that individual is not named as a suspect in it's this not case. Named as a suspect. Not named the as a suspect. The information's never gone before a grand mm -hmm. jury. Mm -hmm. um, he's still on the force. Mm. And it is a really troubling situation that has not followed protocol. Uh, and so that's all we're asking. We're not, we're not saying in our show who's guilty or who's innocent. All we're asking is for the public to like, get involved. Right. You know, contact your local right. innocence projects. It's well, that's involved. what you do. So there's, as you put, there's a call to action component of that. And you mentioned the Innocence Project. And joining us uh, via Skype is attorney Jessica Sino. Jessica, are you there? Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I mean, what, what Hillary is talking about is so often in small towns, people feel that they're the underdog, that, 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 that the odds are stacked against them in finding justice. Um, for crimes that are unsolved. I've been very open. My sister's murder is an unsolved crime. And if I've felt helplessness in that case, I can only imagine what others might feel who don't have someone they can call like you. Well, and that's really what these cases are about, are, are oftentimes a lack of resources. And it takes an army to reinvestigate cases, to overturn a conviction. So you're talking lawyers, law students, and then involving journalists, involving storytellers, because once somebody is convicted, it is nearly impossible, regardless of innocence, to actually overturn that conviction. The system is not designed to right what it got wrong.